we have purchased a red brick home on the central coast of New South Wales, a true ugly duckling. And whilst most people have told me it should be knocked down, I have a vision to transform this home into a Palm Springs inspired masterpiece. I have worked with literally thousands of clients throughout my career on their own renovate or rebuild journeys, but this time it's our home and it's personal. Mitch and his team are back on site, continuing the installation of our hard landscape surfaces. They're working from the courtyard where they've already started laying the pavers. They've come across the front of the house and now they're continuing up our driveway, installing the road base ready for the new pavers to go on top. In addition to our entry foyer, we now have the go-ahead to start construction on the other structural addition to our home, the pergola. My design for this is based on a grid pattern. It's going to result in a structured feel that elevates the look and feel of our alfresco. Sandro provides an extra pair of hands as our pergola starts to come to life. The first pieces of timber are being nailed into place simply to hold them where they should be. Then they're going to come back and add bolts where required. This is going to achieve a really clean, good looking frame that's of course structurally strong. Paul and Mark have completed the framing for our brand new entry foyer and the standout element of our breeze block wall is a complete triumph. Continuing the straight line of pavers that they've already laid in the front yard is giving them the starting point to continue that line into the driveway. They're installing the concrete pads and then the pavers as they go. It's a bit of hard work on these fellas but they are doing a great job. They are lifting, mixing cement, measuring and laying them as they go. And of course, they've got a string line to make sure that they stay on the straight and narrow. Those clean lines and grid effects that I saw firsthand when we were in Palm Springs are now becoming a reality on our own project, helping us create U Minor Springs. It's time to start cladding our new entry foyer. To achieve greater height in that new room because it's not that high, I've decided to go with exposed rafters. I don't want to install plasterboard here. I want to elevate the look and have more texture. So we're using a combination of weather text boards on the ceiling, which are also going to be used outside, and the easy craft cladding on the walls. This combination of line is going to add visual interest to the space and it's perfectly mid-century modern appropriate. We were a little bit under the pump because the boys are trying hard to get this new entry foyer up to lock up stage. It's not completely waterproof yet. We're actually placing a tarp over the top until Julian comes back to complete the installation of our brand new Calibon roof. Shannon is back on site, this time inside our new mini courtyard. He's finishing off the masonry wall and he's added that top header course of our beautiful arc breeze blocks. This new wall looks great from the courtyard side as it does from the bathroom. As he cleans up those ironed joints, I'm already starting to think about what plants we're going to put in there. Paul, an experienced builder, has already measured and notched out sections of the timber frame. This is going to allow those cross pieces on top to slide into place. It's creating that grid effect I'm after that's also structurally strong. So, yeah. so. Back out the front, this time on the driveway crossovers, the boys are pouring and compacting more road base. This is going to create very cost effective but appropriate driveway finishes. Simple timber boards are being installed to separate the road base, the garden beds and our new lawns. This is going to contain each of the surfaces whilst also creating those clean crisp lines that I'm after. An amazing rainbow appears to greet a new day. We take it as a positive sign that we're in the right direction and how good does our new pergola look. Sandra and I are back on the tools, this time with a paintbrush to take care of the painting of our new pergola. It's quite amazing to see the transformation from raw pine to the clean crisp white. It not only elevates the look of that grid design, but it makes it look like a structural element. It makes it feel like a much more refined space to spend time in. 
it's quite a relaxing process. It's looking great from underneath, but I reckon it would look awesome from a bird's eye view. The work continues out the front with loads of topsoil being installed to provide a nourishing base for our new lawn and gardens. This area, the footpath, is actually out the front of our property. But spending time and money here to create great curb appeal simply makes sense because it's from the street that you see the whole facade. A metal edge has been installed. It allows us to create that beautiful arc in the front yard whilst also creating a long lasting separation between the lawn and the garden bed. Whilst we're doing this, of course, it's time to think of the future. We're installing a watering system. Having a sandy soil underneath means that the water can disappear quite quickly. By having control and a watering system that we can put onto a timer, it's going to allow us to control when we water and where the water goes. The original steps into our courtyard were quite shallow and high. Mark has added a new timber frame and on top of that, he's adding compressed fibre sheeting. This is in fact now changing three steps into four. I did this because I wanted deeper steps. It was a design decision. They look far more elegant and they're actually safer to walk up and down. This is allowing the boys from Ocean Landscapes to complete the paving. From the front of the house, Sandra and I have to blink. Except for the sound of cockatoos, it feels like we're back in Palm Springs. Well, almost. The greatest thing that we've found up here is that it replicates what we had as growing up. Community, family, all driven into one. You're not just knowing what they want, what they order, what they drink. You know their name, their family and everything else and it's really special. Since I've been up here I think the greatest thing I've noticed is um, when I first started some of the young ones, whether they're part of the surf club um, or the local board riders, there's grubs, there's the uh, Mao Club, there's the your minor board riders. These kids are now coming and working for me. It's amazing how you see these kids grow up in this area and what they've turned out to be. So at any one day during the week even, on the weekends or weekdays, there's that many things going on here. Um, from the surf club's perspective, they have the carnivals and competitions and everything on the beach. We have um, the markets, there's men's clubs or the bowling club come up and have their coffee day. But those types of things are, are just part of what makes this community what it is. How good is it that we're here on the Central Coast and it's just something special? Stefan is back to install the entry foyer windows. He starts firstly with the frames and then installs the double glazed panels. As each of the new windows go into place, Paul and Mark can come then and add the cladding. It's that process that we need to be aware of, part of the construction constraints. As the last piece of glass goes into place, we're almost emotional. The journey of this whole renovation has taken its toll on both of us. It's such a big project. Back outside, the turf has arrived. We are so excited to say goodbye to all of that sand and see it replaced by beautiful amounts of greenery. Mitch and his team are doing a quality job. As the turf in the footpath is almost complete, it's time to crack on in the front yard and it's looking awesome. The hill's hoist had to be removed and repositioned as it wasn't going to work with those new small additions of the inner courtyard, the raised garden bed and that potting sink area. It also had to please that really needy designer, that's me, who wanted everything to line up. Now it sits within that grid pattern. It allows the power of those lines to work perfectly and of course it makes aesthetic sense. I've included two strip garden beds on either side of the lawn on the footpath. In here we're going to plant some irises. Sandra and I actually saved these from our neighbours in Sydney as they were going to be thrown out and go to the tip. These are going to create a beautiful softening effect from all of the straight lines in the front yard. 
The locations and placement of all of that greenery is very important. It's supposed to reinforce the power of the grid effect of the design while softening all of those hard surfaces. The installation of the cladding is continuing on our new entry foyer, repeating the power of the line. And as we look through the window to the front yard, we look through our new Brickworks breeze block wall. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. An exciting time has arrived, the installation of our new double front doors. These solid core Hume doors are a statement. They are so good looking. Rebated hinges tick, we're almost at lockup. The tiling on our alfresco was never complete due to an excessive amount of rain. We had to wait for that to dry out. We therefore waited until some structural elements were finally completed, allowing the tilers to return. They're now able to complete the tiling outside as well as the skirting, adding some grouting and a cleanup, and it looks a million dollars. That front loading dock, as Sandra and I started to call it, has been completely transformed into our new entry foyer. It's exciting to see the tilers now out there as well, adding our beautiful terrazzo tiles to those big extended stairs and the landing of the foyer. This time we're using large format 1200 by 600 tiles. The size of them definitely makes an impression. Our striking terrazzo tiles and our feature stone wall both come from Tile and Stone Warehouse. They must be happy to be finally reunited in New Minor Springs. I had many options when it came to the splashback tiles and I couldn't be happier now I see them with the choice that I went for. I've added texture with the size of the tile and laying them vertically is perfectly in keeping with that mid-century modern look. They add texture, they contrast against the smooth finishes of the joinery and the gloss finish adds contrast against the beautifully matte vanette kitchen doors. The uneven edge and undulated surface of the tiles create that handmade look. This also complements and contrasts the clean finishes and straight lines found in the rest of the kitchen. The key to the success of my Umina Springs palette is the simplification of finishes. I'm repeating the same finishes throughout the home, allowing the texture and pops of colour to stand out. Therefore, I'm using the same splashback tiles in the laundry, bar and kitchen. As the final pieces of tile go into place, the kitchen is complete, ready for that final layer of styling. I sourced our lighting for this project from another local supplier of Oka Lighting. I decided to go with track lighting. Now again, this is perfectly in keeping with that Palm Springs mid-century modern look, but I actually like it because the track lighting allows me to direct the lighting where I want it within each of the room. For the colour, well, I chose matte black. I've used this as an accent throughout the home in the frames of the new windows, the light switches and power points. And it just helps define the space in a really practical way. In the bathroom and ensuite, I decided to include wall sconces in brush brass. They add a bit of bling and practicality because having a light source on either side of your mirror creates an even flow of light, allowing everyone who looks in our mirrors to look their best. Back outside, Mitch and I are combining our creative juices to work out where all of the key planting is going to happen. We've managed to source a great range of plants, some from friends where we've salvaged plants, some we've propagated, some we've saved from the street. Mitch has also kindly donated some key planting as well, cacti and some succulents from his own garden. He's also arrived with some pebble options to go between the pavers. Yeah, what have we got? Some pebbles here, mate. Okay. And some, some rigid. Okay. The darker pebbles are the cheaper ones, but I'm instantly drawn towards the lighter pebbles. To help with the budget a little bit, the boys are adding some of that road base between the channels of the pavers and raising the height. That means that we'll have to use less pebbles to achieve the same effect. A great budget win. As the pebbles go into place, that grid effect that I'm after is coming to life. And the mulch going on our garden beds, well, that's going to help us save and retain water. 
and it softens the look against all of the other hard surfaces. There's so much happening on site. To continue watching James Border House, just click through to episode 8, part 2.